The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN Tuesday morning, just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. We got about 30 minutes to go until the start of trading and we got markets slipping just back into the red in the last few minutes. Quite a day yesterday, to say the least, in the S&Ps and the NASDAQ across the board. This morning, we're kicking things off kind of right where we ended the day. Right now in the S&Ps, you are negative by three points, trading at 46.58. Let's just zoom in on the action on the S&Ps right now. Quite a turnaround, man, just remarkable. You can't say enough about the day we had yesterday, folks. Uh, not sure it's indicative of where we go from here, but pretty remarkable, the turnaround, especially in the NASDAQ. You're talking about going from negative 2.5% to even on the day. I'm not sure how many times you've been down 2.5% on any of the major indices and finished the day in the green. I'm not sure how many times you've done that without some kind of monumental catalyst as either a news driver, a Fed event, uh, a non-farm payroll number, something to the tune that would jumpstart that. Yesterday, we just got a turnaround. I mean, yeah, there's stuff happening in the market, but we just got a straight out turnaround. The S&Ps were trading from 46.60. You traded down 90 points and you got it all back. The market in the last 15 minutes surged almost 30 points in the S&Ps to close right at that number. NASDAQ 100, checking out the move we had yesterday. At about three in the morning, if you recall, the markets were actually in positive territory. Things looked pretty rosy coming into the Monday morning session. Barely in the green, not so much the case as we fast forward. Forward. You trade from 15,672, okay, that or thereabouts. What's the high there technically? 15,669. So we'll call 15,670 down 520 points. And just like that, though, you got basically it all back. You ended the session green in the queues. And just like that, we were actually above 15,700. The Dow, quite a turnaround as well. The Dow had been the leader early in the day. You sold off at right about 930. You trade down about 500 points. We're just under 36,000 in the Dow right now. Bitcoin had a little bit of a moment of truth on the morning program yesterday. I was talking about under 40,000. Bitcoin surges back with the market, but that was a little bit of a moment of truth. You take a look at the daily on Bitcoin, you're in some dicey areas when you're actually trading at the lowest level that we've been at on crypto, Bitcoin in particular, since August. August. You were actually below any of the lows that we were trading at in September. Those lows just at about 40,000. You got a 39,000 uh, handle on Bitcoin. We'll see how they, uh, Bitcoin trades this morning. Crude showing renewed strength. Checking out the crude contract. You talk about an acceleration, man. Crude was down to 78 bucks yesterday. We were just trading at $80 this morning, 79.86 in crude. You got the gold contract back above 1800. Yesterday you were down to 17.92, gold climbs to about 18.10 overnight early this morning. A little bit of a sell-off in about the last hour in that gold contract. And we jump to silver, up six pennies right now in the all-important notes and bonds. On the day that we have Fed Chairman uh, Jerome Powell in front of the Senate, up for another nomination. Not too much probably expected to come out. But nonetheless, he will be there. There is the opportunity for something to occur. We got the tenure right now basically right back down near lows that we're talking about of yesterday you were up i mean look at the action four o'clock this morning you were up to 128.14 we just gave up 11 ticks in the 10 year in the span of about the last uh what four hours four and a half hours in that 10 year and let's jump over to the vix you talk about some swings vix up to 23.33 and just like that we finished the session yesterday at just above 19 we're trading at 1987. okay let's jump over to the indices taking a look at some of the long-term channels i've been talking about these channels many times we're at some critical areas here you trade below that channel line keeping your eye on this channel line just to see how critical we're at this critical line now i was talking about yesterday morning even especially in the nasdaq we'll jump over in a moment saying we're at a pretty critical level here now this channel line in the s and p's you're talking about basically back to the covid lows and you see zooming in we're sitting right at that channel line right now and it's remarkable that yeah you got a tail okay but you got a tail 
And right as this market trades out, look at that tail. Right as this market trades out of that channel line, okay, talk about a rebound, man. Now, the only dicey thing here is if you're familiar with the Channel King, our man Bud Rolfs, he would always love his channels, used to be a host at TFNN, had a couple of newsletters. Uh, what he would say is he would look at channels, all right, and he would say the, the best part, way to trade a channel is if you're looking for a breakout, let's say you're looking for a breakout to the downside, of this channel line, okay? S&P's been in an up channel. If you're looking for a reversal of that, what you look for is you look for it to break out of the channel. You want it to come back up and test that channel line. That is where you go short. You do not go short when it breaks through the channel line. You let it break through the channel line. You let it come back up and test that channel line. And that's where you would be looking for the opportunity to go short. Nothing to say that it can't break back through into the channel. But if it does, reject that channel line. That's where you can get some negative action, folks. So interesting where we sit. Interesting the pop we got. I said in my newsletter yesterday, if we get a pop, and at that time it was early yesterday morning, uh, middle of the day, if we get a pop, that was quite an if at the time. But I said, if we get a pop in these indices, it's going to be critical to see how they trade as we come back up to these channel lines. So keep your eye on them. When you check out the Qs, put up three of them there, uh, Qs made it back in that channel line. Now, we were up to 381 this morning. We're back down to 379. We don't have a daily bar for this morning yet on this chart. The Qs, you back things up. We're talking about going back about 16 months ago to September, maybe uh, uh, October. Really, the run begins last November when we get the vaccine efficacy numbers. Now, what's remarkable here, just in the context of life, right? It seems like two years have just been all compressed into uh, a COVID haze of, of time passing by. Last year, we were supposed to kind of come out of COVID, right? We got the vaccine efficacies in November. We start rolling out the vaccines around the new year. Uh, I think I got my vaccine early on March and April. They started going out to the general population. Nonetheless, we've had the third wave. We've had the Delta wave. We've now have now have the Omicron wave. Uh, point being, that was only a year ago. That's when the market really took off, going back to last November. Be interesting to see how we come into 2022. Quite a different scenario here. It seems like everyone's getting Omicron, all right? The vaccines do work, folks. Boosters do work. When you're talking about either protecting some cases and protecting, talking about really tough cases, if you're in a vulnerable population, you're worried about spreading it. Yes, breakthrough cases everywhere, all right? Very possible to be the uh, person who's, you know, double vax boosted and you've had prior covid and you get the omicron variant but the bottom line is when you're talking about people in the hospital you're talking about deadly sickness unfortunately people who are unvaccinated a large majority of that we are going to see though that we are in a much different spot coming into 2022 than we were in 2021 and guess what we are right at a critical point on the lower boundary. Now, I said, this is the cues. Look how perfect this channel line is, folks. All right, and we're going back 13 months. You better keep channels on your radar when you've got a channel that is well-defined like this. All right, ironic that we get a pop right when it blows below, below those channel lines. As you can see, it got above that area a couple occasions, pretty short-lived, only for a couple days before then you trade lower. Again, this sell-off almost began December 28th, right at the peak level. Now, zooming in. On the 15 minute, again, critical area. That was yesterday's action. You trade down to 369. The channel was at 376. Didn't look like you'd be back in the channel line anytime soon. And guess what? We're back above that price level. 376 is that channel line in the queues. All right, folks, stay tuned. We got the S&P negative by one, NASDAQ negative by 27. We'll be right back in three minutes. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. 
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We get the markets dipping a little bit into the red right now. You get the S&Ps, negative five points right now. We get the NASDAQ 100, negative 54, Dow negative 21. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hinks. Every trading day, folks, noon Eastern time on Tiger TV, the TD Ameritrade Network fast market with Kevin Hinks and Tom White. They break down the day's market action. They walk you through hypothetical trade setups. They're talking defined risk, folks. They're talking options. Kevin Hinks, good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. Yep, big day today, as we'll uh, hear from Jerome Powell in his confirmation hearings. Uh, we already had just a little bit of data out this morning. NFIB was a little better than expected. Red Book was a good, solid number at 14.4%. So uh, the uh, retail sector is still solid and strong in, into the new year. But as you know, Tommy, tomorrow starts... Uh, a slew of economic data, CPI on Wednesday, PPI on Thursday, retail sales on Friday, that should give us a pretty good picture of what's going on here in the economy. And yesterday's trade timing was nothing short of spectacular. You know, it was about, if you look at the charts, about 70 minutes into the trading day where all four indices bottomed out, bond yields topped out, and the VIX topped out. And the market spent the rest of the day grinding higher, so much so that the NASDAQ got all the way back to positive. That day yesterday was spectacular, Tommy. It's pretty remarkable, man. I'll have to, we'll have to hire some statisticians uh, to, to figure out, because I was saying, Kevin, NASDAQ is like 2.5% in the red. You finish in the green. I don't know how many days that you've had a 2.5% day down and you finish in the green. And many times, as you know, and the listeners probably know, but many times there's a catalyst, right? There's a huge catalyst, as in there's some type of economic number. There's some type of major news number. Maybe it's a Fed decision or something like that. Yesterday, man, there was just a turnaround in the middle of the day. It was pretty wild right. uh, in our trading room, the den, in our YouTube chat. Uh, the end of the day was pretty wild, Kevin, as it charged higher and actually got into the green. Pretty remarkable. Uh, and as you said, man, things, we kick right into it. We got CPI tomorrow, a big number when you're looking at inflation. Uh, we got PPI, you got retail sales, and we're coming into earnings too. We got Delta on Thursday, and then we get the banks, man, coming out on Friday. We almost get all of them out there on the big ones on Friday. Interesting with the yields. Are you looking, I mean, you, we know the economic numbers are going to be huge that you just talked about. Where do you put the bank earnings, Kevin, coming in Friday as we look forward to all the action we have in the you know few days that we got coming up this week? 
Oh, yeah. I mean, the bank's starting earnings season with J.P. Morgan, Wells Fargo, um, Citigroup, and a couple other small ones, that starts earnings season. You know, that, I always say the banks start earnings season and Nike uh, ends earnings season. But so, yeah, Friday morning starts us off and running, Tommy. And, you know, I expect the banks to put up some whopper numbers. Now, does that mean the stocks go up? No, because they've had good runs into this earnings report. But yeah. certainly the banks, it'll, and it'll be a tone change, right? It'll be something different to focus on besides government policies and interest rates and inflation. It'll be another uh, different data point for us to go through each day. And then, as you know, it doesn't come with a, a drip. It comes like a fire hose with earnings into next week and beyond. It's pretty cool, man. Some of these banks, too. I'm just jumping through them in the Thinkorswim platform. Uh, you got Wells Fargo, really quite an acceleration, man. You end 2021 about 48. You're trading up $7 higher already. You're pushing 15 to 20%. Uh, you jump over to the likes of City. City is up a good 10% coming into the year. Of course, we've had yields, quite the run in yields, Kevin. Uh, we started this year at about 1.5. We're sitting hovering near almost 1.8. Now, what's interesting is, and you brought it up, the way this market moved, like you said, everything turned on a dime. I got a chart of the 10-year up here on the Thinkorswim platform. We were down to 127.30 for price action yesterday. You charged all the way higher to almost 128.10 at the end of the day. You finished overnight, as in you were overnight to 128.14. Interesting, though, Kevin, we've actually had a little bit of a sell-off since about 4 in the morning, about 10, 10 to 12 ticks. Uh, maybe that's an ominous do you ever look for because we haven't quite had that big of an impact in the markets right yes we've seen kind of a pullback but that 10 year you're only basically what are we six ticks away from the lows we had yesterday morning meanwhile the market is sitting almost two percent on the nasdaq higher from where we are do you look for that correlation a little bit or what do you think when you see that 10 year kind of inching back towards where we were yesterday in the middle of the day meanwhile the market's much higher still yeah well i think remember I think the market reacts, you know, it gets uncomfortable with a surging tenure, right? And you, you can make the case that the tenure has surged over the last week or so from basically 1.4 to 1.8. Now, if the, if the tenure starts to plateau and stop, markets get uncomfortable, and then over time they get less uncomfortable. And I think that's what you're starting to see because rates didn't accelerate higher. Now, you know, some of the some of the notes, you know, the ten year note was a little oversold. Um, some of the you know the TNX was a little overbought. A lot of things got into oversold and overbought territory uh, yesterday. So that was part of it as well. Maybe some short term, but you know it'll all have to do with Jerome Powell's comments today and uh, CPI tomorrow morning, Tommy. Pretty cool, man. We got a lot of volatility. We got two-way market, man, to say the least after yesterday. With that in mind, Kevin, we gave a precursor to all the action going on out there. But what are you guys going to be talking about coming up on Fast Market at noon today? Like Folio is going to do a presentation on the home sector, home builders. And then around that, we're going to trade Amazon and we're going to trade AMD. Two names in the Ooh. news, well, basically every day. Because so we got we KB Homes. That we'll look uh, at and break down today. We get KB Homes, I think. Are they out with their numbers after the bell today? I'm jumping over the Analyze tab, the Earnings tab. January 12th, tomorrow, KB Homes out with their earnings. Nice. Yep. You'll be jumping around. And then Amazon, man. This one, a little bit of a head scratcher. I'm a big bull on Amazon, but talk about a consolidation, Kevin. Underperformance last year, as we kind of um, all know. You chop around, and we've traded now from 3,700 to 3,200. That company, though, in my opinion, this is my own bias, folks, they have a lot of potential upside when you think about AWS with the retail. It seemed like last uh, uh, December for the holidays, Kevin. Maybe you can inject this into the program. I think I was buying two items a day for the entire month on Amazon for the holidays, but we'll leave it at that. Um, I kid, but quite a company. Kevin, man, we appreciate the conversation. We'll be watching the show at 12 noon today, as always, man. Thanks for having me on, Tommy. Have a great day. Always a pleasure. Folks, 12 noon Eastern time today. You heard about it. They'll be talking about the home builders. We start to get those earnings. KB Homes, they're out with their numbers. And Amazon and AMD. Yeah, Amazon, man. Check out the consolidation. I got the chart up here on the Thinkorswim platform. You've been chopping around, folks. June of 2020, we have been above 3,000. You're going to open today about 3,225. Twice you've made it up to 3,700 and change right now. You jump over to the Analyze tab. You jump down to the Fundamentals. You're talking about a company valued at $1.6 trillion. It's quite a valuation, to say the least. But when you start comparing it to some of the other companies, remember when the race was on? 
to get to one trillion. I think that was back in late 2018. Uh, the usual suspects competing, right? Microsoft, Apple, Google, Amazon was even in the mix to make that run. Not so much the case, Apple. Almost uh, one and a half times to two times the company that Amazon is. But man, they got a lot of growth potential when you think about AWS controlling the backbone of the internet for a majority of businesses combined with, of course, the retail, and they just got a lot going on. Whether it's, you know, you look at Rivion, right? And then you look at, they just teamed up with another car company out there, just really in the forefront. And I talk about, with my dad all the time, I said, uh, you know, the process of a lot of the competitors, Walmart, Target, they got good processes, but man, they got to spend a lot of money to compete with Amazon because there's a lot of things that they just don't live up to in the same degree. We'll talk about a little bit more when we get back. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back for the open. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find a newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational web webinars for all trading levels. And make sure you check out Tiger TV for free on TFNN.com or TFNN's YouTube channel for live financial content from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern on market days. Stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open and we're open and basically right near the pre-market session lows. We got a chart of the S&P up here. You were down at about 46.55 last night at about 2 a.m., down at that area at about 3.30 a.m. We open right at that area and you're talking about 25 points off of the highs. On the NASDAQ 100, you just gave up 150 points from the highs and you're actually below where we were last night on the open. Not the kind of open that you'd want to see for strength, folks. You're up at 15,720. We just gave up 1%, 1% since 6 a.m. this morning. They're in there talking about in the den. Our man Jeff posted a nice little uh, tweet there saying that, you know, 
And this is uh, his take, all right? But it could be rebounds, okay? Do happen faster because you're getting volatility in both directions in bear markets sometimes, man. And look at this sell-off. Watch out below, folks. Here we go. NASDAQ 100 down 85 right now. The market can't even catch up as we accelerate out of the gate. Now, compared to where we were yesterday, folks, that is not an acceleration. Context is very important here. If you think that you missed the sell, then man, you weren't paying attention yesterday. We got 400 points almost to where we were yesterday at the lows. You have about 80 points to where you were in the S&Ps on the lows. And the Dow, you're talking about almost 400 points. Pretty remarkable, uh, that acceleration. Let's jump over to crude, 79.52. There's a quick turnaround, up to 80 bucks, back down to 79.54. Gold contract, up about five bucks at 18.04. We jump over to the VIX on this negative spike. VIX, back above 20 this morning as the market, not quite done, trading to lower prices. And folks, if you are a trader, short term, we have a two-way market in a big way. If you're a trader in the long term, then you better buckle up for some volatility over the next year because it's going to happen. It's going to happen in both directions. And where we sit in this market provides the opportunity for some pretty extreme volatility when you look at this uptrend. Okay? That is not how markets move forever. We all know that. If you take a look at a long-term chart of the S&P or any index, that is not how they work forever. Quite an upturn channel from almost 2170 to 4808, 2174 to 4808 in the span of under two years, okay? Volatility, folks. But over the next year, the way this market needs to figure out how to price all of these equities with rate hikes coming, it's just very difficult to peg it when so much is up in the air. We take that and fast forward to today's action with Chairman Powell. So in his remarks, the opening remarks for his confirmation hearing, he says that the Fed is to ensure inflation doesn't take root in the economy. Well, I'm sure that's not what he wants his legacy to be, folks. Post-pandemic economy is likely to be different. That's an interesting take as he comes out there. We will use our tools to support the economy in a strong labor market and to prevent higher inflation from becoming entrenched. Brief opening statement prepared for delivery, the confirmation hearing before the Senate Banking Committee today. We can begin to see that the post-pandemic economy is likely to be different in some respects. I'd say that's putting it lightly, folks. The pursuit of our goals will need to take these differences into account. Uh, yeah, and that is ahead of today's hearing. Scrolling down on that. Nine percent U.S. unemployment in December, um, jobless rates for black Americans rising to 7.1. There's obviously a discrepancy in what's going on in terms of the economy with the winners and losers. Powell, in his remarks, lauded the Fed's supervisory and financial oversight work over the past four years. We worked to improve the public's access to instant payments, intensified our focus and supervisory efforts on involving threats such as climate change and cyber attacks, and expanded our analysis and monitoring of financial stability. While well, the market's interested in where they're going to send the interest rate right now, not how they're keeping track of all that they just referenced. Nonetheless, we'll see if there's any headlines that come out. The one thing I did catch that was interesting here is just that, Mark, that uh, likely to be different, the post-pandemic economy, wondering how that shifts in terms of how they impact things in any way. Let's jump around to some of the FANG stocks as we got the NASDAQ and negative prices. Dow accelerating. You're off four-tenths of a percent right now in the Dow. You just dropped 150 points from the open in the Dow. S&P's down 15 at 46 45, yeah, we are making lows right now across the board. NASDAQ 100 down 84 points. Little pop in the NASDAQ 100. We'll jump over to some of the FANG stocks. Let's kick it off with Amazon. They're going to be talking to Amazon on Fast Market at 12 noon today. Amazon, positive. Always interesting. You can learn a lot, folks, about how stocks behave on days like yesterday, days like today. Amazon, basically flat right now. You jump over to Microsoft shares. Microsoft, that's a sell-off on the open, down 1.2% from Microsoft shares. We jump to the big dog, Apple. Apple shares down two tenths percent, almost flat for Apple. We jump to Google shares down about nine tenths percent. We jump over to Facebook, Meta, positive by a hair, up one tenth percent. Um, let's see how some of those banks are reacting today. You got JP Morgan down a bit. Ooh, there's a little bit of sell off on the open. My goodness, JP Morgan down four tenths after opening in the green. We jump over to City. City's up about four tenths. We jump to Wells Fargo, basically flat right now. All right, let's jump around to some of the other stories because we got some stories out this morning. I'm going to kick it off with Citadel. 
Citadel Securities, how about 1.15 billion? Uh, potential IPO path, that's speculation, but nonetheless, it's the first outside investment giving Citadel Securities the $22 billion valuation. Uh, Sequoia, partnering with Paradigm, which is that Alfred Lin, who Paradigm is a crypto investor. Uh, Paradigm, there it is, cryptocurrency investor Paradigm. I was looking up them this morning. So 1.15 billion, they value the firm at about $22 billion. Now. This is different from Citadel, the hedge fund, to keep in track, okay? Citadel Securities, uh, corporate behemoth, trading, uh, 1,600 clients, sovereign wealth funds, 50 countries, Citadel, uh, 1990, $43 billion investment capital. He later established Citadel Securities. So Citadel is the hedge fund. Citadel Securities is the market maker processing the trades. Now, we all know that they've gotten a lot of press during COVID in terms of whether it was the Robin Hood fiasco, right? And and uh, Ken Griffin and his involvement with potentially that as alleged. And don't think it happened, but man, he was everywhere. The growth they experienced, how about 6.7 billion net trading revenue in 2020, almost double 2018. Earnings before interest taxes, deductions and amortization in the red, net trading revenue in the black, just an absolute explosion. You back it up to 2017, they're at 1.7 billion total revenue with 755 of earnings. You fast forward, you're at 4.1 billion in earnings last year. Well, I say last year, 2020 now alone. Uh, yeah, 4.1, pretty remarkable. And they hint that if they're taking on private equity for the first time, that might be their path to an IPO coming in the future. But they declined to comment, uh, not surprising there. Yeah, this was an interesting one as well. Huawei ranks number five in the US patents in a sign of Chinese growth. It'd be interesting to see the political shape of how this plays out. Uh, IBM retaining the number one position and getting US patents last year. Pretty interesting that IBM keeps that number up there considering how the stock's been pummeled. I'll pull up a chart of IBM long-term in a minute, uh, but Huawei, their networking equipment is shut out of the U.S. market, but they received 2,770 U.S. patents last year, number five behind perennial top getter IBM. Then the other companies that were in there, what do they got? Yeah, uh, yeah, Samsung, Canon, Taiwan Semiconductor rounded out the top five. Nonetheless, surprising if we have such a, a problem with them. Um, the success in obtaining patents comes even as its networking equipment is shut out of the American market. I imagine that's going to become a political, political topic at some point, as it may uh, deserve to be. Stay tuned, folks. We got the S&Ps negative by 16. We'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. 
Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got the NASDAQ 100 off an even 98 points right now, 15,910. You look at the S&Ps, you're accelerating lower, down 24 points. That's a second leg down. We got five-minute bars going on here in the S&Ps. 930, you drop 15 points. 935, you give it a pause for a few minutes. And 940, you pick up on selling again. It's 942, folks. Market's only been open for 12 minutes. Uh, we got some action out here in a big way. Look at the Dow. Dow. Just dropped 225 points in the last 12 minutes, folks. NASDAQ 100 down 103. Remember, we were in positive territory coming into things at about 5 to 6 a.m. this morning. Markets not so comfortable with that idea. Let's jump over to the VIX this morning. And the VIX, 2061. We jumped to notes and bonds, the all-important. Uh, and as I was talking about to Kevin, keep your eye on this one, right? Because that's kind of what I was looking at. Kevin, dead on, talking about, you know, middle of the trading day. Everything was at low as you traded higher. Meanwhile, you had the 10-year at 9.10 this morning, okay, trading at the same price point, keep in mind, of where you were at much lower price levels than where we finished the day, okay? And the market probably woke up and said, hey, guess what? Higher yields are still coming. The 10-year just traded down 12 points since 4 in the morning. We got to catch up, and the market sells off down 113 points. We're now under 15,500. And again, context is important. You still got 350 points to go if you want to talk about yesterday's lows. So still well off the lows. We'll see where we go from there. All right, staying with the Fed, staying with interest rates, staying with hikes. Uh, the Fed's Atlanta president, Raphael Bostic, he is talking about maybe in March, ready to act to cap inflation with March liftoff. Shrinking the balance sheet could come soon after, he says. The trajectory of the economy is quite positive. I would be hard-pressed to disagree with that. When you look at an unemployment rate at 3.9% and inflation out of control, the Federal Reserve Bank of Atlanta President Rafael Bostic said the central bank may need to raise interest rates as early as March and start reducing its balance sheet fairly soon after liftoff to contain surging inflations. We are ready surging inflation. We are ready to act to make sure that inflation does not run away from us. They better get going then. This is the most important message that people should hear when they hear me or any of my colleagues talk. We are paying close attention. We are going to do all, all that we need to make sure that the economy stays in a good place. That interview conducted Monday. Uh, President, the Fed, Bostic said he penciled in three interest rate increases in 2022 in his forecast when they met in December and accelerated its bond tap tapering. That was up from two hikes in September. That reflects a growing economy, a fast tightening labor market and inflation that has surprised to the upside. This is important stuff. That's why I'm reading it, folks, because this is what the market's paying attention to. If the numbers continue to come in the way they have over the past several months, I think a March liftoff would be appropriate. We could start our liftoff of interest rates in the spring. Uh, Fed officials meet later this month. Their next meeting after that is March 15th and 16th. Now, I said in my newsletter yesterday, and I think this just sums up my feelings very well, and so I'll repeat them. The headline unemployment rate is at 
And the CPI, which we get tomorrow, so that's going to be an important one, all right? But the last CPI data we have is for November, 6.8%, the largest 12-month increase since 1982. And I'm reading this, okay, from the newsletter that I sent out to subscribers yesterday. There would have to be a monumental change in our economy to avoid three to four hikes this year. Inflation is here and unemployment is under 4%. You don't have to be a market genius to look at just those two stats and realize that pressure will be on the Fed to hike and maybe faster than they'd like to. Folks, read it, you know, hear that again. CPI was up 6.8% year over year, the largest increase in 40 years, and unemployment is at 3.9%. Inflation is at 6.8%, and the unemployment rate is at 3.9%. Remember those two numbers, folks, because unless they change dramatically, which is what I said, there would have to be a monumental change, okay? And that's what Bostic is talking about. If things continue on the path they are, which is that CPI is still pretty hot, unemployment is almost at historic lows, the rate hikes are coming, three or four of them. The risk is probably to four, closer it is to three at this point. I mean, it's staggering. In any other world, folks, outside of COVID, if you had CPI running at almost 7% inflation on a yearly basis, and you had the unemployment rate at 3.9%, I mean, you might get the Fed come in and, and do a surprise hike to cool off the economy because they'd be so worried about inflation. But somehow, We've convinced ourselves that there are enough transitory factors that the Fed doesn't have to act too quickly. That argument is losing steam as inflation continually accelerated last year past what the Fed was thinking. So take that for what it's worth. But man, when I go over it in my head, when I was thinking about it this weekend, trying to write the letter that I publish on Mondays for Rocket Equities and Options and factoring in the the tantrum that the market had last week, let alone what we did yesterday, right? NASDAQ down 4% to kick the week off, uh, year off, excuse me. Yeah, that's what the market's seeing, folks, and they are dead on straight right. Unemployment's at 3.9%, CPI is at 6.8%. Rates are going up. They have to. Now, we'll see where CPI comes out tomorrow. As I'm Kevin Hicks was saying, very important number, and you see why. I'm hinging on that. I don't expect a massive drop, but that's why. If, if things change, of course things can change. Right. If if inflation goes away and the CPI drops much faster than we thought, you might not need four rate hikes. But I don't imagine that's going to happen out of the blue with everything going on in this economy right now. All right. Let's jump around to what else we got going on. We have a bunch of companies out there with their um, some action. And yeah, how about. Uh, where were we? I had it up here. Here we go. So stocks making moves. Let's jump to Rivion. Yeah, their COO, they lost. Uh, this company, be careful buying these IPOs right now, folks. Rivian, talking about getting ahead of itself, man. Up to 180, you're almost basically at lows at 80 bucks right now as they lose their COO, I believe. Who was it? Yeah, chief operating officer. Seems like your operating officer, when you're going from a pre-market company that makes no cars and is valued at $80 billion to ramping up a production effort for a pre-revenue company the likes we've never seen. Amazon's got 100,000 vehicles they've already ordered. Your COO is probably a pretty important gentleman or woman, uh, gentle lady in that role. And meanwhile, this cheap op chief operating officer uh, had left the electric truck maker. They said it wasn't a big day. They say it was planned. Nonetheless, I would pay attention to that one because there's probably nobody more critical in that company than the CEO than maybe the chief operating officer as you're figuring out how to operate a company that's going to produce hundreds of thousands of vehicles from zero vehicles. Uh, speaking of losing executives, Intel, they poached MU, Micron's chief uh, financial officer, as their new CFO, effective next Monday, starting right away. At the same time, they announced the departure of client computing group head Gregory Bryant. Uh, it seems like they, uh, the market liked the idea that Intel was poaching Micron's CFO out there as they were a little bit higher, Micron a little bit lower. This market, watch out, folks. Uh, Intel. Down a little bit as we've gotten a market turnaround, though. Let's see on the 15-minute. Yeah, we were much higher on that news last night. You give it all back. Micron uh, was lower, and you actually reclaw claw back the losses to be just basically negative with the market so far this morning. Let's jump around to some of those FANG stocks. Microsoft down about 7 tenths right now. We jump to Tesla shares down about 1.2% right now. We jump over to Google. Google shares down a percent as well. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be coming right back. We'll take a look at some of the other equities moving. Uh, we got three minutes. We'll be right back, folks.
Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free! Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call Newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call Newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps negative by 21. Market's getting a little bit of a bounce off the lows. NASDAQ 100 down just 56 points right now. I got a chart of IBM up here. I referenced earlier talking about Huawei, the number five slot for patents. IBM, the perennial leader there. Does this look like a chart of the perennial leader of patents in terms of patenting brilliant ideas to capitalize off the profitability of those ideas? That's a monthly chart going back to 2013. Uh, and really remarkable, this... Uh, is that this month? It sure is that we have hit the top portion of that. Now, folks, that is a little bit. Let me just back this up even more. Yeah, and that's really correlating. It's a pretty liberal channel line when you look where you're going here. This top part in terms of where you put that top line there. Um, but you can see that this line created off the bottom. I mean, where do we end up here? Maybe somewhere in here, somewhere in here. Point being, we're bumping up against maybe the upper boundary line of that channel line on a monthly basis long term. Maybe that's where IBM tries to break above it, but you saw you get above it, and then you're potentially right back under that price point. All right, what else we got going on? Jumping around. So the reason why I had IBM up there is that they got a double downgrade, not what you want to see. Uh, IBM, UBS downgraded to a sell 
from neutral, no, excuse me, just one downgrade. I gotta be exact. Don't be unfair to IBM, just one downgrade. Uh, what I was talking about though, Juniper, they got a double upgrade, that's what I had in my head. From underperform to a buy, uh, Bank of America said most networking vendors are still attractively valued and said Juniper's current guidance from management appears conservative. JNPR is their symbol, up 2.1%, giving back maybe some of the gains. You had Albertsons, ACI out with their numbers, you spike higher, you're actually down 8.5% though, after their numbers are out. CVS uh, raised the full year outlook. Profit of 833 to 838. Market was looking for eight bucks previously. CVS is their symbol. They were higher. They give back some of it. You're positive by about half a percent right now. All right, folks, quite a market. You get the Dow continuing to drop. So much for the Dow leading the way on the rotation. The Dow, you're within 130 points of the lows yesterday. The Dow just gave up 350 points from early this morning. S&P's down 31. NASDAQ 100 down only 80 right now in the Russell, down about 12. All right, folks, stay tuned. Should be an interesting day in the markets. We got live programming all day. Our man Basil Chapman, he's up next with the Tiger Technicians Hour. We got our man Larry Pesavento, Fast Market, Steve Rhodes, Dave White, and Tom O'Brien this afternoon. Have a great Tuesday, everybody.